I'm sure we go through some team news before we get started. The teams have just uh, come out here. I don't mind running through those for you. So it's just a one change for the Siltman this afternoon. It's a, a debut for Dylan Farge, who came in. I think he had a, a, a one-week spell at, um, at Glossop North End before joining here. Had been a uh, professional at Oldham Athletic uh, for a number of seasons there. So the team news for the Siltman this afternoon in goals number one Will Stanway, a back four of Trey Pemberton, Brandon Lee, Lewis Fenson and Laurel Mendy, midfield two of Murphy and Dans and then you have your number ten is Alex Curran, off the left we're assuming it's Dylan Farge who's taking up James Berry's role, uh, Neil Kengney off the right and then the Tumba Masanka gets another start in the number nine role after his debut goal for the Silkman um, last time out which I thought he had a very good game with Sanker against um, against Witten so some nice touches it was a good goal yeah yeah so I, I was surprised actually see you know we've seen so much about the other three signings um, I was surprised to see Farge on the team sheet but I guess you know there's a match fitness issue with certainly two of our signings a little bit surprised not to see Sweeney making a start but um, I suspect we'll see him on in, at least in the second half yeah, I imagine so, because I mean, I was watching his um, signing interview and he sounded very keen, didn't he, to hit the ground running. I think he said he wanted to get eight goals in the in the final 11, 11 league games um, this season. Well, of course, that, that's relying on him getting game time, is it? He's on the bench this afternoon, Dan Sweeney, 18 and 22 at Bromsgrove Sporting earlier in the season, coming in for an undisclosed fee. And we've also got Navid Nasiri on the bench as well as the other new signing. Tom Thorpe, uh, not involved this afternoon, so we'll... We'll wait to get a potential debut from, from him. I was saying before uh, before we came on air, very intrigued by the signing of Tom Thorpe. It's a, an interesting one, isn't it? It is. I'm intrigued as well. He hasn't played for six years. <laughs> I'm sure he's done a bit of training. By the way, good afternoon to people in... Everybody in Bobby Tracy, uh, The Filed, Madeira, Wick, there you are, and... Tokyo, always good to hear. Very good. Always good good, to good afternoon, to you all. As we uh, as we get underway here at the Leasing Com Stadium, Macclesfield kicking from left to right in the blue shirts, white shorts, white socks. Glossop in a, a bright orange number with black shorts and orange socks. This afternoon as challenge comes in on Alex Curran there. Early doors and ball just been played long down the left hand side. Uh, and then second half. Yeah, just one, one little error, and two points gone. But, um, this should be, you know, as I say, this should be a win for the Siltman. Leak, I notice, are playing away at Hanley today. You know, not an easy game for them. No, not at all. And we'll, we'll try and keep across those um, those key results for the Siltman as the ball comes towards Misanka in the box here, and he's held. He just managed to get the shot away in the end. The rise, always rising over the uh, the um, the goal there, Ellison. The, uh, the so it's uh, Craig Ellison who's going to take this free kick and goes very very long all the way into the to the mat box there. It's well dealt with by Mendy, of course. The second ball does fall to a Glossop man to try and get a cross in, and it's blocked out for the first Glossop corner of this game. That was, that was quite a long kick on that, wasn't it? There from Ellison, did, did well to get it won. So Glossop looked to get this corner in here and it's going into the near post. That's great hands by Will Stanway. He's got the chance to throw it early to break. And it's held by Kengi. He's done really well. He's going to look for Masanka and he does find Masanka. He's onside now, charging down the right hand side. Kengi's gone up back with him. And that's a great challenge there from Burvey to a Burry to get across and take the ball away from Masanka there. It was a, a dangerous counter-attacking opportunity. And there and yeah, she's not quite clicking on that left hand side yet, is it, Richard? No, it isn't. And uh, can we have really seen much of Farge yet to to make an assessment I, I'm guessing he's the one who's most match fit which is why he's playing and, uh, oh, oh, Curran now with a good ball. Free ball into Kenley plays it square across the box tries to find Masanka hits the post and it's Farge on the rebound and it's Macclesfield FC 1 gloss at North End nil out of nowhere Dylan Farge gets a debut goal for the Siltman Glossop just didn't clear their lines there, did they at all, Richard? No, and the ball trickled past the keeper, hit the post, and this came back beautifully for the debutant. And uh, you know, say we hadn't seen much of him. Well, now we have. <laughs> He's on the score sheet, and uh, well, Mac, Mac have their 
have their noses in front and yeah it, it was kind of a little bit of messy good work down this right hand side and the ball was sort of fluffed towards goal so the keeper just couldn't get dive across to his right and it rolled on to that left hand upright came back out and well uh, Farge won't score an easier goal I suspect I mean that's, that's great for the Filtman to score with what What's really their, their first chance of the game? I don't think we've had a shot before that, have we? As well, well neither keeper. 17 minutes played here. Still, neither keeper made a save. No, well, yeah, no, they've, they've not. As um, Glossop get things underway here, and it's Yoke now in the centre of the park for Glossop, who tries to find the man out on the uh, the right hand side. And Stanway's done really well there just to claim the ball out of his feet, and it's ran out for a, a throw by Farge in the end there that Glossop's going to take about 25 yards inside the, um, the map. 15 yards from the byline, looking to go long from this one. Does go deep into the box, it was well headed clear by Lee. And Curran tries to turn his man and break. He's tried to brought down there by the Gossip man, and Curran is just running away and finds Masanka out on the left hand side. He's got space to drive into one on one. Can he get the shot away? He's into the box, plays it soft to Curran, and Curran gets the shot away in the end, straight into the hands of Ellison. And yeah, that was a good counter attack, Richard. Oh, excellent counter attack. Well done, Masanka, and uh, yeah, brilliant. Uh, little against Winsford United. Oh no, sorry, it was 1874 Northwich. It was a 4-1 defeat. It was played at Winsford United, because I can remember because I was actually at that game um, back in the 17-18 the season. As uh, Matt now looking to try and break on Glossop again here. It's with Farge on the left-hand side. Going to try and play it long to Masanka or Dans and does find Neil Dans. It's an excellent first touch. We need support with him. Kenny's there with him. He takes an audacious shot from 35 yards out. It goes well over the uh, the good bar of, uh, of Ellison there. Good following, I would think. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's very good, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I wouldn't have anticipated that many people would come, but I mean, it's not that far away, is it, really? It's no, no. 50 minutes in the in the car, I was looking, 20 miles or so. Pemberton now firing the ball down the right-hand side. Masanka's trying to hold it up out on the right wing, chipping it forward for Pemberton. I don't think he'll get that, but he does win a corner, so uh, nice little... Uh, play there down the right hand side in a combination and uh, Pimpton well to in swinger taken short to Curran Curran back to Kenyi Kenyi's going to cross it he does chips to six yard box but it's very easily dealt with by the Glossop defence back out with Murphy out on this right hand side nice little one two for Curran Curran chance to cross he does this goes right across six yards out Dan's heads it goalwards not much pace headed clear there by Glossop and good work by their midfield to keep control and get the ball forward to Etier in the left wing position. Pemberton goes back and I think that will be a foul and that might be a booking. It just, yeah, I suppose uh, Pemberton was a, just a shade late. Etier just tipped the ball forward and the ball actually was going into touch, it wasn't going anywhere. But Pemberton shade late and gets a booking, and uh, I suppose that is a fair enough booking. It's yeah, one no one's th making a complaint there, are they, Richard? I mean, I, I looking for movement. He's got Kengi comes short, nice turn by Kengi. Charles to chip it in towards the far post. It should be. Oh, and I'm going to say it should be the goalkeepers, but in fact Farge actually got his head to it before it went over the top the goal line just beyond the far post I think I thought the goalkeeper was going to play it and he headed it into the side netting slightly dangerous moment <laughs> I mean that was that was really inventive from Kangley I mean I wouldn't have spotted that pass in the ball back to Sonogo Pemberton intercepts the ball up this near touchline ball is inside with Mendy and it's, uh, Mac trying to say use their ascendancy create some more chances but at the moment they really I say the only real chance they've had is is the goal and that was sort of a half chance as Pemberton now nice little ball forward to Malango he's got three chance for him shoots and didn't really get hold of it and down goes elephant Ellison and smothers the ball nice little turn by uh, Manga on the we have five minutes of the first half left. Macclesfield one, Glossop nil. Farge after about 16 minutes. And he's 
player who's just played the ball back to Mendy in his own half. Oof, Mendy beats his man slightly dangerously, but nicely done. And then spreads the ball out to Pemberton. Pemberton, ball forward to Masanka. Masanka, ball back to Kengi. Kengi, a chance to cross, cutting inside. Will he shoot? No, he eventually spreads it wide to Lee. Lee chips the ball towards six-yard box and a flick towards goal by Curran but uh, straight into the arms of Ellison. Nice little move, and that's the best Curran could do. He's just got to hope it was directed towards the corner, but it was too central. Sooner or later, Yoke will take a free kick from his own half, right the way up towards the Macclesfield box, but it's found Sonogo out on the edge of the penalty area. Good control by him. He's trying to head towards the touch line. He's got Pemberton in front of him, and he keeps going down, and he fires it in off Pemberton, out for a corner. Is he going to play it short? No, he chips it across the six-yard box. Yoke heads it on. It's still up in the air. It's not cleared. Eventually, Mendy tries to clear it, and it flicks off his foot and into the roof of the net, and it lobbed. Stanway had it covered. I think the Mac players feel that it was... Well, again, left-footed. Taken short. It will come back to Lavelle, who will cross towards the far post. Stanway just gently pulls the ball out of the air a whole mass of players seem to go down I don't think anybody's particularly hurt it's more of a heap than yeah, anything. there's nothing in that was uh, no, um, no, I don't no. think that's time left on Mac yeah 1-0 haven't put this to bed and uh, eventually it's launched forward by Murphy but uh, only as far as Moran, he gets the ball forward towards the Macclesfield box. Dans wins a header, but uh, only as far as Valentine. Valentine will try one, which she does, and it, it uh, well, it was never heading towards goal. It was probably five yards. Stanway. It's not the same as the Witten game, but uh, it has similarities. Now, current lovely ball to Kengi. Kengi can go through on goal. Can he turn onto his left foot? Does the ball is oh takes a deflection and goes into the roof of the net. Neil Kengi brought the ball in onto his left foot, fired it goalwards, and then a last ditch interception by a defender flicks it into the roof of the net. Oh, I thought that was going to be two. Should have been, shouldn't it, Richard? I mean, it really should have been. I two. appreciate Kengi wanted to take that on his. But looped over. Here comes the corner. Far side, heads go up. Mendy can't quite get to it. Will fall for Dan's, but he can't do anything before the half-time whistle goes. And we reached half-time with Macclesfield one, Glossop nil. Farge after 16 minutes, the ball coming back off the post, a debut goal for him. Mac have had a lot of possession, not that many really clear-cut chances because there's a massed Glossop defence have done pretty well. Looked as though Neil Kengi was going to double the lead. Looking like um, Glossop are going to try and go long from this um, kick at the start of the second half, and they, they do. They're trying to pile bodies forward early doors, and it's well headed away by Mendy there, but only as far as the Glossop captain, Valentine, in the centre of the park for Glossop now, and he's gone back to the Glossop defence to start again. Who are forced long, juice of good press from Alex Curran, headed by Brandon Lee away, and it's just bobbling around in the midfield, and eventually out for a map goal kick there. Options, it's going to go long up to Etia. Just bounces over Etia. He's not a not a tall lad, the uh, gloss at number nine. and Can't win it there, so Mac have got the opportunity to regain possession from themselves now with uh, Favre down the left-hand side. Does well to get past Burry. A lovely little roulette there from him and is eventually brought down by Burry. Lovely skill from, from Favre there. And it was almost a bit, uh, dare I say, James Berry-esque. Well, yeah, Fars was turning away there. <laughs> he nutmegged one and then did a little twirl past the next. Lovely roulette. Uh, oh, over this free kick. Only a two-man wall. Curran is going deep into the back post. It's a good header and it's in from the Tumba Masanka. He's checking to make sure he's offside there. It was a great header down from Lewis Fenton. And all Masanka had to do was steer it into an open goal again, wasn't it? It was a really well-worked free kick routine. Full credit to Curran finding Fenton at the back post. He nods it across the six-yard box for Ntumba Masanka to 
stab it home. It's 2-0 to the Siltman. That was great, wasn't it? Richard? It was great. Very, very well controlled. And, uh, yeah, Masanka nearly just ploughed the ball. It bounced up into the roof of the net for those pedants out there. <laughs> From inside, it was uh, just beautifully worked. Very simple, in fact, in many, many ways. And Mac have their second. And surely they have control and time to control of this game. Uh, it be interesting to see how Glossop deal with that now when you're 1-0 you're still in the game when you're 2-0 you know you've got to come out and uh, they're going to do their same kickoff again by the way yes they are they haven't gone long this time that's exactly what Mac need at the start of this second half and I mean that's great from definitely clipped nothing nothing given and Ellison hoofs it clear out of his hands there it's well headed away by Mendy he's had another superb game this afternoon I've got to say he's been really really confident and positive in his defensive work today is Pemberton now on the right hand side he's got Kenley there with him just crossing the halfway line but does go short to Kenley in the end he puts in on his favoured left foot back with Mendy now Lee now with space on the left hand side he's got Farge there out on the far left and it's Farge now to drive his man Burry and does get to the byline he's into the box and tries to clip a ball into Masanka but it's well headed away and falls back to Danza gets the shot away and that's an absolutely excellent save from Ellison in the gloss at goal. He threw himself across the entire goal to get a hand out to that and tip it away from the corner. Great save, uh, great move. And Neil Downs, one thing he's really good at is getting his foot over the ball. The ball was high bouncing. He smashed it into the ground. It bounced up, looked as though it was going in. Overload somewhere. That's how we know how much Neil Downs likes to get in the box. But yeah, they're just that, that bit of safety and security in front of the back four when we need it. You know, they're always there and available as as options and just yeah, helping Max to control games that a little better than what they had been doing previously despite a lot of the, the good attacking football that we've seen under Danny Whitaker at times. There's uh, Macca now building another tap down the left hand side and it's Farge now he's actually going to get the cross in which clips back onto his right foot and is clipped by Burry there as he tried to dance away from him and it's rightfully given a Max free kick about I say, just down by the, the byline about five yards out from the, the box here and is that a, a booking. booking for Burry? Yeah, yes it is. I and then there have been a couple of others where I thought they might have been booked compared to the Pemberton booking, but uh, that was very similar. Tight in the box for, uh, for Glossop here, they'll go short in the end. In fact it does, happen. so now he's got a chance to cross though, cross six yard box, there's Mendy clearing up to the edge of the area, Dan's heading it away, and good control by Sweeney and then bad control by Sweeney. First one with his head as picked up there nicely by Gillam. Ball breaks towards the edge of the Mac area. Out to this right hand side to Burry. Burry a chance to cross. And there's a block there by Brandon Lee, but it ricochets off Brandon Lee. Behind for a corner. That's where most people are. The ball goes, should be the goalkeepers. <laughs> Stanway makes a catch. In fact, both goalkeepers have had it rather easy for crosses just recently to his goalkeeper and uh, Sweeney's not really had much to, to work on he might now because of Paul Ball which is arrived at Curran Curran chips it across the box it doesn't reach Kengi but it will reach Dans who's on the edge of the box looking for somebody forward he's got Kengi on the edge of the area shoots and he does shoot but <coughs> like a few Tilton shots this afternoon it's right. stayed quite much in their own half, although Gillam does come forward, but ball is spread out to Lee, left wing position. He feeds it back to the ever available Murphy. Murphy trying to chip it through from, from Maynard. Maynard <coughs> on the left hand edge of the area. Back to goal. Gets it back to Lee. Lee's got Murphy inside him. Murphy to Lee. Lee now can attack the box and cross to the far post. This is a good a good cross and it was actually Neil Kengi, without jumping, headed the ball with some purpose. 86 minutes gone. Mac 2, Glossop nil. Pemberton forward to Kengi. Kengi. And he can cut in. Little ball across six-yard box. Dummy here. Sweeney. Oh! Lovely turn by him, but a great block by the defender. And this one ricochets into the... Macclesfield College stand, the star lane. Ball, lovely little ball, a dummy that 
allowed the ball, reached Sweeney, seven yards out. Far side, King towards the penalty spot. And the ball drops here for Sweeney, who shoots and one straight into the arms of Ellison. Two chances for the debutant. Well, Drummond on the far side, but I think Mack are just going to play this short. Yeah, and there goes the final whistle. That was hardly worth it. <laughs> but it's ended here as a very comfortable 2 0 win for Macclesfield. Macclesfield to uh, Glossop North End, nil. Goals in the first half by Debutant Farge, in the second half by Masanka. In the 17th and 49th minute, Mack have dominated this game. Perhaps the only disappointing thing, 4 0, 5 0 would have. Uh, not flattered them as it is it's very comfortable and with that leak result they now go six points clear at the top of the uh, North Northern Premier League West Division and uh, debuts for Farge and Sweeney and uh, we no doubt will no doubt see Masiri in the future but uh, it's it was, yeah, just so comfortable, really. I didn't say anything else. No, it was just a, I mean, just a really professional and, and comfortable performance in the Sutton afternoon. I mean, Colossus haven't really offered any sort of, of threat and you know, thankfully hope they'd, they'd learned from last time out against Witten, you know, not to concede a, a silly penalty late on. And Yeah, full credit again to, to all of the, the map players. I mean, that's 12 games unbeaten now for the Sutton, going all the way back to the middle of November when they lost to Runcorn Linux. And I mean, that's really, really important in particular with that massive game, first versus third, away at Workington next weekend. And yeah, there's, there's not too much to say about it. All